Hey, all right, cool. Yeah, so we should be going. Is that, is if you want to, sh if you want to share it on the discussion page. Yeah. Yeah, let me do that. I'm up here trying to get my steps in for the day, and trying to have a first day above ten thousand in a long time. Nice. Which is, which is good. You know, for an office, for a desk worker, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, so you have to put in some concentrated effort to get above 10,000, so. Well, I'm actually standing right now, I got a, one of those standing desks, so. I try to do some steps into place and stuff like that to keep, keep it going. Yeah, I had a, I had a standing desk at my office. But it turns out I didn't use it as much, right, mm -hmm. as I would have liked. Um, you know, if I was if I was on a call, I'd much rather have been just walking around, like mm -hmm. kind of what I'm doing right now, right? If, like if I don't need to drive, right, then, you know, I'd much rather just walk while I'm on a call. Right. Um, and I do a lot, and I do a lot of calls. So yeah. I guess it's just kind of part of being in management. I drive calls, right? But if I'm driving a call, then standing was fine, but also setting was too. Yeah. Because right? I was trying to, I was trying to stand the other rest of the part of time. But it's been a, a next week's a year. For, for me at least. Oh, uh, from being home. Been, yeah. Yeah, the next week's a year. So I'm thinking, if I remember right, I think I've wore pants. I want to say like less than ten times in a year. <laughs> now, to be to be clear, I that means I just wear sweatpants and shorts. I I do I do, and what I mean is like jeans and khakis. So I don't wear khakis that often, anyways. Mm -hmm. Or like dress pants, because uh, my workplace is a jeans. But yeah, I just. Uh, I probably wore sweatpants or gym shorts 350 days or more in the past year. Yeah, that's about so. fair. Hey, good, e yeah. good evening, Jeff. Jeff Bozeman said good evening. He says, I used to use my standing desk early in the morning, and then I would shift to the sitting position for the afternoon. And he wishes he still yeah, had a standing desk. Yeah, I think that was, you know, that's a pretty good, like, you get a lot of energy in the mornings, right? Usually you pound your giant cup of coffee or a couple of sodies and you get to working so how many people do we got watching i got about six. Oh, okay all right well we'll get rolling then so i know you're trying you're going to eat your mcdonald's uh, I've kind of... chicken sandwich right yeah so they're new not that we are not sponsored by mcdonald's um but i'm trying their new crispy <laughs> tender sandwich you know if you're not aware and a lot of people aren't there's like this huge like chicken sandwich wars that's been going on for like a year now remember it was yeah. it was like chick-fil-a and popeyes for a while popeyes had that chicken sandwich last year and people were losing their minds and they were selling out well now mcdonald's rolled out a new one taco bell is rolling out a, a, a chicken sandwich like it wrapped in a chalupa shell like soft shell mm. it's crazy it's crazy but this mcdonald's one um it's okay I figured I'd you try. You know, I was, I was, it's okay. I watched, uh, I watched a video today, and I probably this will be the last food thing, last non-hero food related thing. <laughs> I was watching a, uh, I was watching a video about like McDonald's menu hacks, mm -hmm. and it, it was like, not really hacks, right? It was just like, hey, they serve eggs all day now. You can get an egg on your McDouble, and I'm like, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Like. Sign me up for a, an egg on my McDouble. Like, I'm going to try that now. Yeah, if, if anybody uh, watching hasn't ever had an egg on their burger, dude, it's so good. I think my first one, I always remember Red Robin was the one that I feel like didn't pioneer yeah. it, but they made it way more popular. And right. yeah. my wife loves it. I get it when I can, but I usually get it with bacon and stuff and I've kind of cut most of that stuff out now, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I did 
it would take up a no, that would be, well that's the thing for me is that I'm doing the Weight Watchers thing right so like mm. a McDonald's burger you know McDouble's probably like I don't know like 10 11 points yeah but an egg and like I think an egg is generally zero but I think that with with McDonald's like they use oil and stuff so it's like one point yeah so so I was kind of doing some you know, planning and thinking, right? Because you got to change it up, right? If I just eat the same stuff all the time, right? That's one of the ways to like not be successful at a diet. Yeah. So, like having a cheeseburger is cool, right? But like it may not fill you up. So it's good to have a cheat have, day once in a while. Well, not so much a cheat day. It is right, but just how do you make that cheat day not turn into a spiral, right? <laughs> is the way. Is, Sp- yeah. Spencer White mentions, "Can we get a food and clicks podcast?" I feel like half of our episodes of Click Stuff turn into a food and clicks podcast. Sometimes we get talking about Tyler's Chipotle half the time. So yeah, our chicken, our chicken wings between me and Jason. So yeah, it's. Um, I tell you what, why? So just to get us right in, right? So, um, you know, so I think we just go ahead and I'll, I want to touch on like Dustin Craven's question first. Because mm-hmm. that's kind of that's kind of more of a, a normal podcast question that we can talk about. Yeah, and of course. It was you know it, it was if you could play the Chicago event again, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Um, I think the answer is for me was I had in the back of my mind that I should have played Vulture Barclay scientist. Really? Huh? Yeah. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Well, and considering you were the only Dr. Thing, yeah, right, that would have made pretty good sense, right? But even so, I think, like, against your team, right, the Barclay backup is fine, right? So, yeah, um, I've played Vulture before. I got, I think, third to fourth place when he first came out at a, at a pretty big WKO. Or a super qualifier or something. Yeah. I think Sam won um, with uh, with Hawkeye. Oh um, goodness! That, that was when but, she was uh, on yeah. her Hawkeye kick for a while. Yeah, yeah, that was when the uh, giant girl crit hit against Stephen Clark Jr.'s uh, "You Need a Pop In." Which he says, "Good evening." By the way, he's in. He was. He's in chat. So. <laughs> Oh, Steven was? Yeah, I don't know if he still is, but he, he said good evening a couple minutes ago, so... Oh, nice. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think that would have been a good opportunity to play that team. Um, that it, It's running out of time, right? Because knockback rules, you know, are going to be changing. Pushing damage uh, changes. Pushing damage changes. Um, he said, yes, so, she did beat my uni. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't think you would have done anything differently, would you, Alex? I mean, you mm. worked pretty well. Yeah. I think the foundation of my team would have stayed the same. Maybe switched out the emotional modifier. Um, maybe switched out the... I don't know. I'm, I'm still torn on the Latvian peasant thing. Like, it hurt me because there were a lot of pog popping pieces pog pop and pieces right. so but i mean that was just more of a de- that's more of a decision thing more so than it is a, i need to change my team yeah well right? I, I i didn't the, think the, about i didn't think about playing the leadership doom location bonus because i get that for free so i could have played that which right. would have gotten me more outwit potentially with valeria so it was relevant so Steven, that's true that's true steven says and don't forget uh your big tony did it too that night oh that's right but uh steven rolled imperv on that one uh and tyler's watching he said buy some soylent oh gosh that's so gross yeah no thanks tyler i i tell you though though like I do enjoy the diet. I've done it before, and I, you know, I've got to stick with it this time for sure. But one of the biggest hacks or tricks that I've done in regards to shakes is I love the Premier Protein shakes. 
Hmm. Um, they're low in sugar, they're high in protein, and I've been mixing that with my coffee in the morning. Uh, a chocolate one, obviously. Yeah. I guess you could probably do a vanilla one, right, depending on your taste. But, yeah. Um, chocolate, they're one-point shakes, or I'm sorry, two-point shakes with, with Weight Watchers, not sponsored, and uh, mix that with just black coffee, and man... I wish I'd have known about it a few years ago when I was <laughs> drinking those protein shakes. Like it, 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 like the shake is fine, right? It's palatable, right? It's not grainy or anything. Yeah, I, I've started making or shakes, chalky. so yeah, I, I, I yeah. know what you mean. Yeah, like a chocolate shake with your coffee in the morning. Mm, chef's kiss. Yeah, I I bought some. I have some vanilla protein powder because I'm also dieting. Um, I'm mostly fasting. I'm intermittent fasting, and then I'm working out a lot more, uh, mostly uh, weightlifting and stuff like that, trying to get into much better shape for Lent, but also because uh, for Lent, I have to eat differently anyway for my uh, religion. So uh, I kind of tag team all of that to do things a little bit differently. So uh, I, I have some protein powder. I usually mix those up with like a banana and some uh, al uh, almond butter. Almond butter, maybe yeah, almond butter, you're... something like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, something that's light but a lot of protein and it tastes pretty good and stuff like that. Uh, Jason mentions that oh. he misses chicken wings. By the way. Yes, obviously. Yeah, we all do. Um, so I think we can go ahead and start on the the rules <laughs> portion of that, right, with the giant capital disclaimer here, right? Right. Uh, so. So what you see on the screen, uh, this is from PJ's page, Kilty Clicksman, go give him some love. Uh, he's typed this out for us so it's easier to read, because as, as you can see below, we're getting this from the WizKids site. Uh, I think it was leaked before that, but it's on the WizKids site, where they show like pictures of the battlegrounds that's coming out with uh, Wonder Woman. And one of the pictures is the front of the pack, the front of the Powers and Abilities card. And so it's a little hard to make out... Um, you know, we got some so, sleuths. Right, so there, yeah, there could be an A or an AN or a period. Yeah. Or a, a dice, a dice roll number that we're missing here, right? But it, it does tell us some things pretty clearly, which are neat. Um, I don't know, Alex. If you just want to start with the first one, we can talk about it. Yeah. So first one. Um, now, are we just going to go through each one, or do we just want to talk about the ones that have changed? Um. Because flurry is the same. It's close. Right. Make up the two close yeah. attacks. We're not going to talk about the like adding on effects that they talked about in that one rules article. We you could go back and listen to that. We still don't know fully how some of that's going to work. Um, as far as like, oh yeah, you could flurry with quake and exploit. Like we still don't. We think that all works, but we don't fully know how all of that works yet. That's right. So we're just going to talk about the individual powers. That's right. That's right. And we can go through them all, right? If there's nothing to talk about, right? Then just move on, right? But just yeah, I'll uh, talk about them all. So I, I've got it straight in my head. That would help me. All right. So uh, flurry's the same. No difference to flurry. Um, leap climb, improved movement, elevated outdoor blocking through characters, phasing teleport, and then it also that's that's it for leap climb. It they I guess they but added it's, it. Uh, it's it's circle circle arrow, right? It's not improved to movement character bases, right? Or is it? It's just now named through characters. We know that from. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. They're it's changing not, all of that. It's the, cir it's the circle, circle arrow. It's not just. Uh, yeah. Character base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. What's the next one? Uh, phasing doesn't really change how it works. It's just they removed movement hindering because hindering no longer hinders movement. So they just removed that. It's now move action improved movement elevated blocking and characters so it works fundamentally the same way there's no difference they just removed the green circle because that's no longer a thing for movement but didn't they also they also took hold on i gotta look at my pack sorry i don't want to say this wrong yeah i don't have a pack um, handy i don't think okay yeah phasing phasing did nothing uh with breakaway right because you ignore characters with movement so that that's why yeah, it didn't it matter. No, it was no static. It was no static. Right. Um, breakaway. So, yeah. Okay. Um, We're good. Earthbound neutralize is different. This character can't use improved movement or targeting. 
So they changed. I believe it used to say something about you have like four, basic combat symbols willpower. or something. No, 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 no. The the new version of it took away willpower. Okay. Here I'm gonna pull up the pack so I can see it too. Uh, yeah, pre pre 2017, it actually changed your combat symbols. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. That just shows how infrequently I encounter Earthbound neutralized. Like I don't even remember right. that part. Well, that was the the big thing was is that pre 2017, if you had Earthbound, you could carry flyers, so your your pickup power pieces could pick Earthbound, Zombie Super Scroll, and Jakeem namely and then they could be able to be carried by another flyer to like get into position mm -hmm. um but alas that changed in 17 uh now it is interesting i think i don't know if they mentioned it before but the fact that earthbound doesn't get rid of willpower is a decent change like it's a decent nerf to earthbound uh yeah right? Yeah, because Nerfbound, Nerfbound, <laughs> Earthbound is meant to be a negative power, right? You're you're not actively looking for Earthbound. You typically right. give that to people, not try to. That's true. That's right. But there are, say, power cosmic, cosmic energy figures in the full gamut of hero clicks that have Earthbound neutralized at towards the end of their dial. Um, oh, the the big one, um, last click. Uh, Hound Dog Thanos. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, from the copter. From the copter. Um, Here, I'm pulling it up. I know what you're talking whenever, about. Yeah, when he popped out for Uni, he had Earthbound neutralized, and that was a big problem. Uh, a big problem with trying to ru run him is that he was way too easy to KO. Um, oh yeah, definitely. So, so new rules figures like that are even better no pushing damage on those earthbound clicks and they get to continue to remove their you know what is it four five six self leadership power <sighs> so yeah you know, that that's that's a, that's a pretty decently but uh, and you know i think that like earthbound neutralized towards the end of the dial makes certain figures cheaper mm -hmm. so that that could be like a buff to those figures that have it that makes them maybe more cost efficient going forward as you look towards new dial design. Yeah, potentially. They might be a little bit more uh, earthbound friendly and throw it out a little bit more because it's one that I don't feel like they ever threw out. It was very rare. Um, so this is a big one. Moving on the charge. Uh, charge, power action, have speed move then close as free so they've changed it to where it used to be move then close at no cost um i don't pj was mentioning that this actually changes vulture but i don't think it does does it well because yeah you can't flurry multiple times but Vulture's thing says you can use charge at no cost. Uh, but you can't activate the free close more than once. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. I see. Yeah, so you can you could charge flurry, now, and then you could just what I, charge attack, charge attack, charge attack. So he gets only one flurry. Now, well, hold on. That's 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 an issue that might. So this is something that we don't know, and maybe a bit of speculation. It doesn't say because move then close at um, at free, right? Um, hold on, I'm what am I trying to say this? I mean, looking I, at I, looking I, at I, 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 a little close attack, right? A, a mm -hmm. lower case close attack might be still a large close you might have to give a character a giant close to make a lowercase close hmm. because if you look at it right now charge just says power half speed move then 
close at no cost with the giant close so that tells me that even if you're just making a bland attack even now if you're just making a bland attack you still are giving that character a giant capitalized close well now new charge new charge also says giant close though that's what i'm saying but the difference is it's at free which you can only activate those once per turn and versus at no cost which you can do multiple times if you can get it triggered multiple times well seeing as how running shot has a similar change to where it's all now there's no at no cost it makes it appear as if they're just getting rid of at no cost and i think they kind of mentioned that in an article they, they did they did mention that so so he no, could he could get an errata he could get a fix that takes away the at no cost and updates it to where at no cost is no longer a thing and they word it to where his power could still work right but at least i think this is the closest thing that we see in the new rules articles that fixes vulture true now we can talk a little bit about that later with the new format that was teased right maybe this makes this new format and whatever i mean for sure rock age this yeah. might make these older formats a little bit more palatable because uh, especially because you it depends on how far you go back you've got hawkeye as well um that right, could, right right quote on quote unquote fix so you could just charge flurry and then charge move back hmm. and not and not make the second attack kind of like you used to be able to do with the old green battery rules it, this that's how it feels to me mm -hmm. right this that's not a definitive thing because we don't have all of the answers yet but that's how it kind of feels to me with this situation that, that Vulture is going to be fixed by this. I could be wrong, but it feels like this is the fix for Vulture. Yeah, I get you. I, I hope so. Um... But we got to remember, WizKids, somebody at WizKids loves Vulture. Um, so he could potentially be saved. Jay also mentions talking about our food conversation. He wishes his Popeye chicken sandwich had an egg on it. That sounds good too. No one's ever gotten Chick Fil A. I don't know who is watching. If you guys don't have a Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A is awesome. Regardless of how you feel about their whatever, their food's awesome. They're political. Yeah, so but is that, was that Jay Sanzen? Uh, no, Jay Major. Jay Major. So, um, you know, Sam and I have talked about this, and we just need to do it one night. Is and it's kind of hard because fast food food when it gets a little bit cold, it gets bad. Yeah, so that's like kind of me right now. So. <laughs> if we're sorry, if we're ever no. in a situation where there's like a bunch of fast food places really close, like make like get the sandwich from here, get the French fries from here, you know, get the dessert from here, right, and then kind of have a fast food feast mm. with the best with the best of the best. I've done something similar, not the best of the best, but the the hopping. Because having so many kids, you know, we lived in our first house, walking distance to Target. And there's a big, big highway that had a lot of different fast food and stuff on it. So one kid would want Taco Bell. I would want Wendy's. Someone else would want something else. So we would right. go to three or four different places. And I'd be like, all right, I'll get a Pepsi from, because I'm a Pepsi guy. I'll go to Pepsi, uh, get a Pepsi from Taco Bell. I'll get a burger from Wendy's fries from wendy's and maybe something from dairy queen i don't know i didn't know you were a fan of trash alex uh it's not trash i love pepsi and i'm in a coke country man like we bottle coke here in chattanooga like we're in the middle of coke country uh um, i just prefer it what, now i like vanilla is, coke but yeah what's right. the uh what bojangles is the thing i'm looking forward to here soon when i go back down to Tennessee. my kids love bojangles i have actually grown to hate it not the food the service the service at oh, bojangles really? leaves so much to be desired oh really i've never had a bad one there and, and if you if you catch them during uh like breakfast time sure they're great 
But if you're like, man, I really want to go for a Bojangles sandwich right now, and it's like dinner time, they're like, yeah, oh, you need a, a chicken sandwich? That'll be about 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay, oh, I'm like, okay, I guess I'll sit in the line for 10 minutes. All right. And that's been a multiple Bojangles. It's not just been one. It's been multiple. So, oh, gosh. yeah, if it's not, if it's not rush hour, like their rush hour, you're, they struggle sometimes. All right. Back to clicks. Um, mind control reads exactly the same, but it got a bump up to its range. It's minimum six now, as opposed to the minimum yeah, four. I noticed that. Isn't that, that's badass. Now I will say. I'm like 99% sure it's minimal range 6, but we can't really read it. So it could be something bizarre where it says maximum range of 6. <laughs> I, that's unlikely to be the case. But because we can't technically read it, I'll put that disclaimer out there. Because it doesn't, it looks like it could be either to me. Like, trying to zoom in, yeah. it looks like it could yeah, be maximum or minimum. But it's like 99% sure it's minimum. But... Right. All right, a big one, plasticity. So this kind of gives us a hint into the break, uh, breakaway rules that we're kind of expecting, because we haven't really heard those. This character breaks away on any result but a one. So no more pluses or minuses. It's just strictly breaks away from anything but a one. Adjacent opposing characters that can't use phasing teleport, leap climb, plasticity, or hypersonic speed only break away on a six. So it, it, it appears to me that what they're doing with this is they're trying to do away with the math. They don't want to do the whole, I have plasticity, he has plasticity, but they've got hypersonic. How does that work? Like, that's confusing for right. new players. So that's this right. it's just strictly, so, nope, you, you just break away on this number, and if you don't have this, you break away on this number. Ooh, so that means, so, so what we don't know, speculation is i like the so first of all i like the streamlinedness of it that's, yeah that's that's a big up big ups mm -hmm. um you know it's just one or six but what that tells me is that hypersonic doesn't get the buff that it used to mm. remember that so i mean hypersonic now is i'm going to hypersonic away anything but a one so if mm -mm. they stay the same you're going to hypersonic four five six right well we don't officially know the breakaway rules um so but if it, it was the same right if hypersonic doesn't have that buff it does have improved movement through characters which is what i had before um well yeah yeah so maybe maybe it, they did away with the hypersonic buff i mean being able to hypersonic away break away i mean plasticity now of doesn't affect yeah i mean with hypersonic you still get the plus two against plasticity technically um now does there is there anything in, is there anything in plasticity about oh that's true i get what you're saying there but i'm talking about against normal things yeah is so there I, anything, is, there, is there any wording there about adjacent opposing characters of the same size or smaller can't use blah 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 no no they took that, that away i think that I, that i don't think was ever in the pack uh, or under plasticity Oh yeah, adjacent opposing characters the same size or smaller can't use this, uh, can't use improved targeting characters or or automatically break away. Maybe they moved that to like giant size or something. I don't know. Maybe they did away with That's that. Weird. Well, I, I remember when they did when they did the new rules. They mentioned when they did the new rules. They specifically mentioned that they didn't want Atomica holding down Galactus anymore. That was in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, so that could this could be a change for that, right? It was just, just speculation. We don't really know. But uh, maybe Atomica holds down Galactus again. Maybe. So I guess that means with that... So Hypersonic then at this point got a buff and a nerf. It's like a, a major adjustment. So Plasticity doesn't negatively affect hypersonic anymore um but mm -hmm. it means you still have to break away when you're next to because like you don't have to stop now when you come up to plasticity because it no longer says characters of the same size or smaller can't use improved targeting movement through characters 
So like, you know, you would hypersonic nexus on one and you'd have to stop. Well, that's not the case anymore because they took that away from Plasticity. That's true. That's true. Unless, unless, of course, the breakaway rules themselves have all of this written in. So we've got some unknowns yeah, there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But it, it feels like Hypersonic got a nerf when it comes to breaking away from everything, but a buff when it comes to Plasticity. Because the nerf would be it could just break away from everything but a 1. Which those were the best times, right? When someone was hypersonic and they rolled a 1. And you're like, ha ha, I've got you. But it would also stink that you can't ever corral them in. Plasticity helped a little bit, but still. So it's it'll be interesting. It'll definitely be interesting. But no big changes to hypersonic. It doesn't... Still zero passengers. We ha we're actually skipping ahead to hypersonic. But uh, that's because Force Blast... I don't know how much we need to talk about Force Blast. Sidestep stayed the same, but Hypersonic. Well, we did get a we did we did get a question about Force Blast. If you want to talk about that? All right, so Force Blast, knockback key phrase, power action, minimum range six, knockback an opposing character within range of line of fire three squares away from this character. Excuse me. Um, so minimum range six is a huge buff to floor, Force Blast. Um, but the change to knockback is a huge nerf, period, to Force Blast. So, it's kind of... I, I believe one of the other things that we didn't mention with Charge, Charge no longer has can't be knocked back in it. Right. Uh, so, so, hey, before we go any further, so Spencer White did ask about Hypersonic, so I think we covered all of his questions there. And he did leave a comment, took away the part that makes characters stop when the, they move adjacent. He, he mentioned that. That's right. And Tyler Mur Murin? Murin? Tyler Murin? Yeah, yeah he, says, he says, what's up, guys? What's up, Tyler? Oh, hey. So, yeah, I, we didn't mention that in charge. I forgot about that. So, uh, it, may be, well, so it may be that they're taking away all of the knockback prevention. That's right. So, uh, we do have a, a kind of a multi-layered question here from Pietro, um, which uh, could help, you know, to drive our discussion here a little bit. Mm -hmm. With knockback damage gone, what is the purpose of spending a power if you cannot deal at least one or two damage? Uh, and I'm kind of correcting his uh, English here. We always appreciate our non-native English speakers when they ask questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Love our foreign support. Uh, what is the per future of Forge Blast on high-costed miniatures, 120-plus points? Um, and then, uh, there were quickly, he asked about mind control. We think we covered everything there, Pietro. Uh, and then also, charge doesn't protect against knockback anymore. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the only power related to knockback to change uh, super strength, quake, and combat reflexes? So we don't know for sure on that, but I would assume I would assume that if it's gone from charge, it is likely gone from combat reflexes, too. Yeah, so I think... Like, going into these changes, um, Force Blast was the like almost number one power. Everyone was like, yeah, they need to do something with it. It's garbage. And they did something with it. They made knockback way worse. But I feel like one of the bad things about Force Blast is that you couldn't use it half of the time. Like, if I wanted to use it, oh crap, you've got combat reflexes. Oh crap, you've got Quake. Oh crap, you've got Charge. Like, that was on so many figures. So I couldn't ever knock you back without outwitting, and I don't want to waste my outwit to knock you back half of the time. So if they just do away with the whole knock back prevention, and they're like, you know what? We took away the damage part. We're sorry. But you can now just knock everyone back however the heck you want to. That might make Force Blast better. Not on high, like he was mentioning, high point figures. Um, but on lesser point, you know, lower point figures, being able to move your figures around. So maybe if they're basing you with plasticity and you need to get them out of the way and you can use the Force Blast to do it. Now, power action Force Blast, meh. <laughs> but... Man, the power, power action force blast wasn't it wasn't really used before, right? Right. I can't see if anything making it be used at range 
Yeah, that's big. Um, it is a buff, right? But it's so small that, I mean, because it was never used before. Uh, rarely used before. Now, have it, having no having the power, having the knockback being an inherent ability is good. It's always been good. That, that's, that, I don't think anything changes other than the fact that it went down because of the, the lack of damage taking away. I, I would say that almost... Was the, that was the big thing, was being able to, you know, pulse wave, force blast, knock someone into oblivion, right? That was that was mm. the play, right? So... Yeah, I, I think it ultimately comes out to be kind of even. And I know that might be not right, might be controversial of a saying. But, like, force blast in general. Now, knockback, major nerf. But when it comes to the power of Force Blast, just if you're talking strictly the power, I feel like the benefits it gained counteracts the negative of the knockback. So, because uh, you're not using Force Blast for the power anyway. Like, rarely would you use a power action to knock someone back to deal one. I mean, I guess you could in some instances, but I feel like everyone has some sort of way to negate knockback. So, I don't know. I mean, it, the, the J Major mentions seems like they just recycled some of the rules back in 2016 back into what it is now. Um, yeah, wh agreed, which is which is fine, right? I mean, they yeah. they worked fine back then, right? I mean, they, they can, it, it's cycling stuff in and out to make it fresh. I, I agree. Um, all right, so we talked about sidestep. Nothing changed there. Talked about hypersonic. Um, before we move into this next one, Spencer White mentions, do you guys think the fact that Charge being able to get be knocked back and possibly combat reflexes was considered when they eroded Valeria Von Doom and Venom Groot? I don't think so. I don't think uh, no, so. I, I think they were I overpowered. Think, right. Yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think. And, and, I, and I will say this. I tell you what, uh, you know, the rules articles, right? I've been optimistic, right? I think I've been fairly positive overall. Yeah. Seeing the pack, right? I tell you what it feels like to me. And I love Hero Clicks, right? I mean, you know, I, we, we, I typic we typically aren't too negative to begin with anyways. But I can tell you what, what I was doing when I was reading that last night, I had to go to bed. So I wanted to read it more. So I was, you know, but PJ typing up the thing this morning, man, it felt fresh. Yeah. It felt good. It felt good. And right, because there was a little bit of old coming back with the with the charge and the running shot change, a little bit of old. I'm sorry, a little bit of new with elf coming up. You know, the old that worked with the new. Sorry, um, feels real good. Feels real good. I'm liking it. Yeah, and I'm I'm eager to see with mind control how the comboing of powers ultimately works. Because if you're able to start using different powers easier with mind control, like they actually combo, that makes mind control infinitely better. Because um, right now it's just an attack, but if you've got some of these cool attack powers you can use with it now, cool. Uh, the other big one, and running shot was the last one that didn't change. Uh, it did change just like charge, so poor Golden Age Hawkeye, he suffers like Vulture does. Um, we think. We We think. We think. Um, yeah. the major change everyone's talking about, it's something that we've really wanted for a long time because we thought it was probably one of the nonsensical interactions, uh, is the fact that stealth, when it's not your turn, hindered lines of fire drawn to this character by non-adjacent characters are blocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which makes so much sense, because I remember... You know, they're trying to tailor to new players. I remember that was one of the first things I ever learned about Hero Clicks and thought that was stupid. Because <laughs> I remember right. sitting down and I'm like, I'm right freaking next to you. What do you mean I can't draw a line of fire to you? I'm in the bush with you. Like, why can't I outwit you from here? Well, stealth doesn't work that way. So now it does. I don't. This is a positive. This is great. Uh, it, it's technically a nerf to stealth. But it's something that, if if they're getting up to you adjacent anyway, you're probably hosed more often than not. 
Like, right. But, well, well, that's you know, so it, it's a nerf to stealth, but it's also a buff to outwit. Mm -hmm. But it also it also makes a comic battle, which is what your clicks is, feel more like a comic battle, right? Yeah. Um, because if your character's in stealth and I can't range you, I'm going to have to come up close and start punching. Right. Um, so it, it's still playing out the same way it would before, I think. Um, but man, it, it does feel good. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention here was your improved targeting circle, circle arrow characters, mm -hmm. um, and then your Golden Age sharpshooter characters. Big buff. Now, they still have to, uh, um, they probably still get the, uh, yeah, they would still get the plus one hindering defense bu buff, but you can running shot into adjacency and still target range attack characters. Yeah. And stealth. So that that's a huge buff for them. And I think it's a it's a needed buff to outwit. I've been talking about this before, I think, on the last podcast. Outwit has just become like it's still so powerful, but it's still it's be, it, it figure design leads to outwit being less powerful. Because there's so much that's right. Power cosmic, cosmic energy out there. Stealth obviously hurts. And I'm not trying to say outwit is weak or a bad power. It's still strong. It's just, as of late, I feel like it had fallen off. Maybe even, out of as, as a top 5 power for me, maybe bottom of top 10. Just because there, I found myself when I had it. Like, I don't feel like I have to have it anymore. You know what I mean? Like, when you're building teams, you're like, alright... I need my perplexes, my props, my outwits. And for the past year, I haven't sat here and thought, I have to have an outwit. Like, I haven't felt that way. If I had one, oh, that's great. Like, cool. But I haven't built around needing it lately. And maybe this helps. Maybe, you know, being able to get my outwit piece up in your face to outwit yourself away. Maybe that gets them, like Bishop, for example, phasing up next to you, which is probably a bad idea. But at least to... <laughs> <laughs> to take away your um, stealth. Not bad. Well, well, Valeria, right? Yeah. She 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 can walk up, you know, whatever sidestep, outwit, do her thing, and then roll that d6, eat out of there. And keep in mind, they changed how hindering for movement works. So you can't chill in the middle of a giant bush, and they get stuck next to you. I mean, they could come up to you and then walk away without having to stop. Oh, they have to stop that wit, but you know what I mean. They could get to you right. through two block, uh, two things of hindering. So. Let's say you're in a big uh, uh, forest of trees, right? They can still get to you. Yeah. So that's... Um, that's. But, oh, go ahead. You know, I was going to say, Spencer mentioned uh, the, the change to Valeria, right, as part of the, uh, the her errata, but mm -hmm. man, I tell you... I know that you know. I know. I know. Adam played a lot of Valeria Spin Ring, killing Dark Phoenixes and stuff last year. But man, Valeria to me is still an S plus piece. Yeah. Even after all of this, she is just insane for thirty points. And these changes today, I'm still thinking in the back of my head. I still got to have that Von Doom on the team. Yep. Uh, Spencer also mentioned, man, he is the, the, the commenter of the hour, because he's bringing up good points. Big buff to Ultra Chase Thanos now that he could perplex while adjacent. Now oh, I got, yeah. I gotta yeah, look so up Ultra Chase Thanos now. Yeah, he means, uh, perplex them down, right? Because stealth, uh, stealth was like a big defense against Ultra Chase Thanos and Uni. Oh yeah, per right, so, so real quick the power perplex, but only to target other characters. When Thanos uses it to target a friendly character, that character can use power cosmic. When he uses it to target an opposing character, that character can't use willpower or protected outwit or protected both versions of protected outwit till your next turn. So I get it now. That's right. So yeah, so that you know that was you know one of the big defenses against Uni, uh, but now he can walk up there and do his thing. Oh yeah. So um, 
that's pretty much it for the powers. Uh, now we have some other things to talk about. Uh, let's wrap up kind of our, our Wonder Woman talk, if you will. Um, if I can find the store. Where'd the store go? Here we go. Um, some other news that we learned about Wonder Woman. Uh, we've got some interesting t bystander tokens. I'm eager to see how they're used. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the screen. I don't know if I could zoom in. Yeah, I could zoom in a little bit. Ah. Well, that was a little too much. Ah. There we go. Uh, you can see some of these are chases. <laughs> I mean, there's no way about it there. They're the first click of how these chases used to be. They're all... Uh, Bizarro, I believe, is Red Sun Bizarro. I think so. I think they're. I think they're all Red Sun. Yeah. Well, the top three. Rookie, I don't think is. Rookie, I think is from. Uh, oh, okay. I it, it looks like the the uh, the KC not K, uh, not KC uh, the the Batman uh, that pops out that that particular giant thing. Maybe it is KC Batman. Now that I look at like the the Bat Robot or whatever it was, Bat Knight. Is that what oh, I'm thinking of? The Bat Knight. Yeah, Bat, does it have precision strike and sidestep? No, it doesn't. It has running shot, pen sight, uh, impervious. There's one of these Batman that does that recently. What was it? Not Jim oh, Gordon. The gym, the gym. Uh, it is. It is the, it, it is the just yeah, Batman. Yeah, 2018 Batman. Oh, Autonomous Mode Rookie is the name of the power. So that might be why they call it Rookie. So uh, that was that was the um, yeah that was the Jim Gordon Batman. Yeah 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 yeah. So we got Tortured Soul, which isn't anything I think. Allied Soldier, like these are probably related to someone who could pop these out. The big ones is we got Bizarro, which is a chase, which has his first style, a chase, but like reflects the chase of old. Uh, Green Light was from Superman Wonder Woman also. Uh, that's his first click. So I'm eager to see if they actually have the powers like they used to, because Green Light was cool. Remember, Green Light gave characters under 40 points toughness and flight. So that was, I, I played him on a Penguin team, because, you know, giving people toughness is pretty nice for 70 points or whatever he was. So I, I'm eager to see uh, how these are used, and if also that means we're getting Red Sun Wonder Woman back, or somewhere in this set. Yeah. Uh, so a quick question: What what is the stat on uh, one of those soldiers? Uh, German soldier eight nine seventeen three, with energy explosion and toughness. Is there only power? Is, it, is that what all of them say? Uh, Allied soldier is different. What, his, what is he? Doing? His eight ten sixteen two with runny shot and enhancement. Okay. All right, none of those, none of those come to mind. I was thinking, um, soldier, um, was twelve points, which was the uh, nine attack with RCE and five range. Uh, let me see. Oh, there's a typing yeah. in soldier doesn't really help, but uh... <laughs> no, uh, the uh, it was the rock my rock pog. Oh yeah 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 yeah. So. Uh, that would have been kind of cool, because um, there would have already been a pog made for it. But yeah, if it's six movement, nine attack, sixteen, seventeen defense, willpower. Yeah, it's, I was sixteen defense willpower with uh, range combat expert. Yeah, so it looks to me three oh, of these. That's cool, dude. Sorry, what? that's cool, dude. I have willpower. I can take freaking tokens off myself. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so yeah, it looks like half of the pogs or tokens are probably generated. The other three, I mean, they're all probably generated, but the fact that two of them are from Red Sun uh, makes me quite a bit excited. I'm eager to see what they use that for, um, because Red Sun was a, a cool story, and I love the Red Sun chases. So I'm assuming we're getting a Red Sun version back. It might be the Legacy. You know, we got Legacy cards coming back again, so who knows? Um, that'd be cool either way if they bring back Red Sun Wonder Woman or they recreate her probably using the same sculpt but bringing her back because it is Wonder Woman's 80th so we I'm assuming we're getting Wonder Woman's of all sorts of different lines 
real quick, what was the uh, stat on the one with enhancement? Uh, sorry, I gotta go back. Sorry. It was. Well, I'm trying to click on it. It's not working. Uh. Oh, it's okay. I just noticed that you said it had enhancement. Yeah, it was like uh, eight, ten, seventeen, something. I don't remember. No, never mind. This is not it then. All right. Go on. Move, move uh, Raphael says, how that bystander was zero range can pulse wave. Uh, none of them had pulse wave. The one had energy explosion. I don't think anybody had pulse wave. I can't open it anymore. I don't know why I can't. Do I have to zoom in? Alright, wait. Here it is. Let's see if I can zoom in. Alright, here we go. Yeah, this is... Uh, none of them have pulse wave. Uh, Bizarro has quake, if that's what you're wondering. Um, and then the other one has energy explosion. That one has range. So Bizarro doesn't have pulse wave. Yeah, Bizarro has quake. Charge, quake, impervious. That is actually matching his uh, Superman Wonder Woman first click. Which I've talked about before. So that, that was an underrated set. I like uh, I like Superman Wonder Woman. Uh, where is he? Uh, you, mean, you mean besides all of the colossals in there that dominated the meta? Oh, uh, it actually, it doesn't actually match his first click click so i wonder if that's something from somewhere else His first click is uh hypersonic is there another bizarro that i'm missing that does this uh maybe uh trinity war no trinity war definitely doesn't i don't know i'm looking maybe the uh switch a dial one no because the picture of of Bizarro is totally the Red Sun version. Yeah. It says US on it. It says US on this thing. So it's the Red Sun Bizarro. They changed the stats. So th that that's what it is. Like, they just changed what he did as a pog. Um, maybe Hypersonic was too strong. And people have commented some of the... The, the pogs don't have the, the new def standard symbol for defense. Don't read too much into that. That was probably just a mistake when they made the pogs. That's all. Um, the only other thing to talk about with one, the Wonder Woman set, um, at least I want to talk about, is the things they mentioned in it and some of the pictures. Um, I don't know if people took a look at this, um, but if you look at the back, you know, the back of the boosters always show uh, the chase set. Like, they just generally do. Um, I don't know if I have one. Yeah, here's, uh, ah. here's the... Future Foundation one, you can see, has all the dooms on it. So, uh, they always show that. Well, we have the Secret Six um, showing on the back of the boosters. This is not uh, the Secret Six, like, earlier Secret Six, where they had, like, Ragdoll and stuff like that. This is Secret Six with the Batman who laughs. Um, this is the one where he basically did the joker stuff to some of these people you got shazam everyone remembers that shazam tyler was pumped about the 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 one comic panel with shazam and superman or something he's towering over him um but basically it'll be shazam supergirl that's commissioner gordon uh donna troy shoot i forget what the other ones were um yeah yeah, so that was probably six of the 12 of them, right? Yeah, that's the other key takeaway from this, is that, you know, you go through, you see we're getting Cersei, King Shazam, that's cool. Uh, but they mentioned there's 12 chase figures, which, if you follow the solicits, you probably already knew that. But 12 chase figures is great, at least I hope so, because every time DC has done a 12 chase figure set, or at least recently, it's been one chase of brick, because that was... The case in Justice League Unlimited with the Trouble Alerts and the case with Batman with the Trouble Alerts. They had 12 chases, I believe. I may be wrong. Um, no, no, you're right. You're right. And you're so right. because they had so many chases, they put it down to a chase of brick. So I don't know if that's also to combat... Um, oh, no, no, never mind. I'm thinking about the next set. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see. They say 80 figures and equipment. We know we're going to get some multiple constructs because they say lantern constructs. We're going to get all those Wonder Woman things that people are joking about. All the Wonder Woman equipment. How much Wonder? How many Wonder Woman could equip Wonder Woman equipment? You know that kind of joke thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Pat was saying. 
yeah. how much wood could a wood chuck chuck how much Wonder Woman equipment could a Wonder Woman equip if a Wonder Woman could equip Wonder Woman equip yeah <laughs> yeah that, yep that's pretty much how the card reads uh, Jay Major mentions maybe they could work off a map like Earth X Avengers Tower map pogs oh you're saying a map that pops out the the soldiers that'd be cool because the only maps we saw were in the battlegrounds uh, we don't know what the do we know what the take home kit is we saw the yeah we do we do yeah so i, I don't think it's going to be a, a that one because it's a reprint the the reprint the they're all four reprints is, is the short answer now that doesn't mean they don't change them i don't know if i saw any location bonuses um, but the battlegrounds had uh let's see i thought i saw a picture of the battlegrounds one Battlegrounds has four full colored maps. Oh wait, th that means there's also one in the take home kit though. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. So, so that's maybe. eight maps or uh, sorry, six maps. Yeah, one double-sided map with the take home kit. Uh that's Junkyard with the take home kit. And oh, Wonder Woman Barn. That's the other one. Wonder Woman Barn, which is a good one, and the Junkyard kit. A junkyard one, which they actually changed junkyard. They took away the location bonus because I believe the second, the actual not location bonus, but the special terrain, wasn't the center of the junkyard like some sort of something it, like it was the the mud pit, right? So you couldn't move through it because that's where the uh, the mutants were. Yeah, now it's just water. So no, well, that's a lot easier. Yeah, so maybe Battleground. It's unlikely, Jay, but maybe. I assume it's someone popping out the soldiers somehow. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the, the, the Wonder Woman stuff. Uh, we did learn about the, the next set, which is another X-Men set. We could wait to talk about that if we want to. Uh, I think the only other thing we were really going to speculate about was uh what we're learning next week so kenny pena uh, mentioned on the hero clicks collectors and players uh two important things one that there is an alternative alternate format coming out um if we like golden age it, he didn't say if you like golden age but he said if now i gotta go back and look at it the word, phrase him exactly how it was phrased uh boo -boo -boo. Uh, he said, uh, nope, hold on, that was a tournament announcement that I was reading. Here it is. I hope everyone is doing well and currently enjoying the new release. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to share that very soon a new format will be announced, and without getting into specific, let's just say that figures that aren't modern age will be happy to hear it. Yep. So... And he mentions, you, you know, he also mentioned legacy cards as well. Like, didn't he say something like, if you seen yeah, what we've done with the legacy cards, surprise. you can imagine or something? Right. Right, yeah, it won't be a surprise since we're looping in older figures via legacy cards. That's it for now. But stay tuned as we've got way more news to share after Scott Porter's Wonder Woman videos start going live next week. So, first, so, big, part of, first big part of news before we talk about formats. Obviously, we're getting Scott Porter next week. So... That's super exciting. We'll probably see our first legacy card. We'll see what we st got going in the set. That's that's pumped because the set drops in April, right? So, uh, that's right. So we're uh, pre release pre releases in March, like this month. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah, we're we're a lot closer than I thought <laughs> to the Wonder Woman. Yeah, we're we're hella we're hella closer. Yeah. Um. So. So format. Well, I think my, I think my speculation is, what does it take to be successful? <laughs> um, so we have no idea what they're going to do, right? So this is just complete speculation, right? Um, unfettered golden age from Infinity Challenge to now. Bad. What? What do you mean? I mean, no. I mean, you and you would think, oh, Felix Faust is the worst of that. No like uh, structural integrity field, feats, battlefield conditions, even there's characters that are way under costed now. Um, it's Faust, 
Doctor Strange even becomes is, is much better now, I think, than he was before. Um, so, like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think they're doing that. Um, so then you've got like Carded Age. So that's like Avengers and Justice League and newer, and still lots of problems there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just don't think that it's going to be that wide, right? I mean, I know that WizKids knows what Pat is doing with Majestics. That, I mean, yeah. I know that they know. I, we know that they know, right? That's, it's quite obvious, right? Yeah, because keep in mind, there's WizKids people around Facebook commenting on stuff that you don't even realize they're with Facebook. So, or, Sorry, right, with right. WizKids. So, they, so they're knowledgeable. Right, so they... They, they've they seen, so uh, that's the next step, right? So Pat runs Bronze Age, used to be called Rock Age. Um, and there's there's lots of problems there, right? That are even right. being discovered years into the format being a thing, right? right. Like you think like uh, Black Glove Demon is, is an issue. Right. right. It was an issue August 2017, wasn't discovered until 2020. Um, you know, uh, things like Fast Forces Penguin is a problem when you have Jason Weingard with Legion. Don't say that. Um, it is. It's I love my fa- I love my fa- Fast Forces Penguin though. Not with that I combo. Know. I just loved him in general. He was so good. I know. I know. I know. But like, there's combos with if like if you open it wide open, there's situations where you can do enough probs. I don't know. PJ was. I saw PJ comment, right? There's some combo where you can not interact with your opponent and win with right. Ratu and Bronze Age. Right. So, I think that that's real hard to do. Um, and I don't know if WizKids wants to put that much effort into it, right? Exactly. That's what right. I was... That's my, that's, that's my bet, right? So, it... then the, the next step up would be the Superior Age. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, so, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, I, I, let me follow that up. With what you're saying is that, so keep in mind that WizKids has been very much 300 point modern focused because that obviously that's the bread and butter that's what makes money makes sense like that's what they should be focused on, and I think people have shown enough interest, and with show, seeing how popular and how well received legacy cards have been, maybe have made them realize hey. This is something people really do want, and we have a way now to maximize it because with legacy cards, because those could drive, like they can now make money off of legacy cards, sorta. Like you gotta buy a brick to get one, so maybe you'll buy more bricks, you know. So they they have a way now to almost monetize Golden Age a little bit. Now I know legacy cards bring them into modern. I get that, but it, it's a way for them to tap into really old pieces if need be, and still make them bring them back to appease the golden age fanatics if you will but i also agree with you you know they don't want to have something that just takes so much effort to keep up with like trying to keep up with the shenanigans that we pull in 300 point modern is hard enough like hard enough to come out with an errata if you feel like once necessary, right. trying to decide about intent, you know, the figure was supposed to do this, are we, do we need to change our minds on it with a watch list? But doing erratas to everything to make it kosher, just, they would have to hire a whole department, like a bunch of attempts to figure that out, you know? So right. to me, it doesn't mean that Golden Age is completely out. I feel like it's just very unlikely they just do a, hey, everything carded, let's go, boys. Like, I just feel like that's just going to leave too many questions that they don't want to answer. Because they've, you know, when they came out with the new rules in 2017, they put that that little thing on the win that said, like, past rules or something like that. Like, a little section. And then they didn't really, everyone was expecting, oh, that means they're going to support Golden Age. They're going to put in past rules. But really, it was just, they used that to rotate the modern rules down into that. So, I, I, I don't think, okay. I don't think we're getting Golden Age. Don't get too excited about it. Um, right, and 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 I don't think we're getting anything that is um, like with all the resources, like the 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 hand, the book of skulls, and the lanterns. And I think those just they realize, even though those are r- relatively newer in the large history of hero clicks, 
those still cause problems. So you said, what did you think right. the next well, one would now, potentially would be? Well, so like I, I I would say you know going up to there right now the idea that I proposed to them a few years ago was. And I get that there's licensing and this sort of thing, but what I think would be cool, appropriate time to mention it, would be like a card pack, right? I mean, you know, which is kind of what we got with the legacy cards, but like, let's just say your lantern batteries, right? You can still use your miniatures, but you can just buy the card pack of, say, all of the green constructs. Right. So it's it's a legacy card, which, you know, I... I I don't want to say that I'm taking credit for the legacy cards, um, but I did mention buying them as a pack, a prepackaged thing, um, a few years ago, and just say, "Hey, your green battery is this now." Like the crossbow was ranged combat expert. I don't know. It could be precision strike now. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Still, sim- still simply adds powers, but it's something completely different now, um, and more in line with the new rules. But, like, so I was going to say, I was just going to quickly say, I don't think Superior Age is it either. Well, Um, real quick, sorry, you brought that up, and now I I wanted to say something about what you just said before we get to Superior Age. Um, Yeah. You mentioned card packs. I think one thing they could do to make a ton of money, man, is just have a legacy set. Like, they've got the sculpts. They don't have to make them into the bigger sculpts if they don't want to. But they have all the, you know, they probably have all the data from the previous sculpt. So, sure, it's sculpt reuse. But just pick and choose some of the best figures. Because legacy cards, I think, are quite successful. I think people are really pumped about it. So why not have, once a year or once every so often, a Marvel legacy set or a DC legacy set that brings back just some of the old old things and maybe that's what they do with like an anniversary is this year an anniversary or next year an anniversary of some sort next year next year's next year's 20 yeah so they might do that for next year and say hey you know what let's do a marvel legacy set the best figures we've had because they kind of did that with uh the the 15th or something like they had callbacks but they weren't really callbacks and they called back they didn't like update the things they kept some dials and some sculpts but I feel like with this okay. legacy card, they could do something with that. But anyway, so you don't think it's Superior Age. So Superior Age, right, why was... why we're starting with Superior is because that was when the new new cards came out. First set with new cards. New cards. That's right. Not new rules, new cards. You still have a lot of problems there, right? That's where you still have Fast Forces Penguin. Um, no, you, which, uh, you know, yeah, you do. You do. You do. Yeah, because it went Superior, then something, then joker's wild i think um so I, I i don't think anybody realizes how many problems fast forces penguin causes in the game of hero clicks um, so it, it is starts with superior goes to tmnt2 jokers shredders yeah but i mean um, goes, it goes all the it goes all the way up to elseworlds right so it's right before mighty thor right right um, which is which is where the rock has chosen to go with mighty age even though we haven't had an event yet be nice to um now here's what i think here's what i think is a possibility okay WizKid says mighty age is a thing uh or they call it golden age they call it something um now you were talking about those team of interns <laughs> well and I've mentioned this one before on some podcasts, and I think it would be a really cool approach to it, would be to say, okay, Mighty Age, we are reasonably, overwhelmingly okay with, right? Now, what we're going to do is, as we have time, or as we have interns, we're going to add sets back in. So for official WizKids events, you could do Mighty Age today, or whatever they want to call it, golden age with kids age whatever and then we're going to add elseworlds so the line backs up to elseworlds here's all of your erratas for elseworlds now we're going to do what if now we're going to do adw you mean yeah you mean slowly rolling out changes right doing a whole set at a time now that's that is ambitious that is huge uh even in and of itself because you know mighty age is fairly off off hands off right pretty much everything's taken care of things can be easily looked at as the rules adapt 
uh, rules change and figures change. Um, you know, I think that if they had the capabilities of having someone go through all the sets, rewrite them, you know, publish erratas, um, you might be cool with that. But I think with the card packs and what with all that you've seen with all these erratas, I think we're getting a lot of insight as consumers into what licensing looks like. Well, I, I, um, and what and what figure licensing looked like. So I don't know if they would even be able to do that, being able to go back so far without having to say we need to go get new licenses and talk to the talk to the you know Marvel and DC and TMNT people about um, you know the changes that we're making to these figures. Uh, Star Trek is another example. They they have to go talk to them specifically. But I, I don't know if that actually is that big of a conversation because these are all pieces that retired, no one's playing with. So it's basically free publicity for these licensees because they're going back and reusing old figures. So it's not like they have to, you know, what's the latest comic book thing going on? It's like, hey, we already covered this. This is free publicity. People are going to be hyped about the figures you already agreed to. Like, I, I'm almost wondering, like, if this is going to happen and it's going to have the erratas fix because we went four months out if you discredit the watch list we went four months without any sort of erratas that we probably should have had earlier like the house of x should have happened in december because we knew about it in december and it was just the set was delayed so now i'm thinking okay we know they're going to do erratas for wonder woman because of the new rules to the old figures like they're going to add put on the thing hey God Emperor Doom has colossal stamina like it used to, or uh, not that. Maybe uh, it, it, uh, Immortal Hulk. He's gonna have that new power. So they're they're now suddenly talking a lot about Aradas. They dropped the House of X one. They've got they're gonna do these things. It wouldn't surprise me if they've actually looked into this and said, okay, we've got to fix some things. Like, what are the problem figures in Superior Age? Hawkeye. Okay, well we already fixed Hawkeye, guys. High five. Like running shots fixed. Good job. Like, the only major problem is maybe Fast Force's Penguin. Um, probably if you count a Watu and all that, sure. And maybe Mini Shredder. So, But that doesn't mean they don't throw something out. Because, you know, they did erratas for all these things. And they let these figures chill, like, for all those years without watch listing and changing them. So they could do right. some erratas to balance things. I, I wouldn't discredit Superior Foes because... You know, they it has the new card design. I don't. They definitely. I don't think go before that. I don't think they bring in any of the old cards. So I'm in the in the the wheelhouse of. It's either Superior Foes or Mighty Age. Um, I don't think there's a reason to go any newer, um, unless they rotate things and they're like, hey, we're rot rotating these sets out. But guess what? We've got a new age where you could just keep playing these sets. Like, I think that would or be... Maybe, or maybe, I don't know, it could be some sort of selective thing, right? Like, uh, let's say this year, right, 2021, you get the uh, Nick Fury set and uh, Joker's Wild. It'll change in February of 22. I just think that's too much work. I just don't think they're going to keep up with that. But they could, like yeah. you were talking about licensing, they could come out and say, you know what, due to no longer having a, an agreement or license with Ninja Turtles, those sets are just not allowed in the in this anymore. Like, we just don't have that license anymore. We can't actively promote it. Um, unless they right. use this as a way to get back the TMNT license, because we kind of got burnt out, but I think the burnt out part is gone. I think everybody wants them back. Because I want them back. I, I missed having turtles as another option. Uh, animal keyword is so much worse now without the turtles. So I, I, I think we'll find out next week. Um, that means speculation-wise, I mean, if you think it's going Golden Age and you sold off all your Golden Age, like I did, um, you might want to go out and buy some figures. <laughs> but you could whiff. You could whiff and it'd be Mighty whiff. Age. And you bought stuff for Superior Foes. You're kind of out of luck, or you bought stuff for uh, World's Finest. You know, maybe they went back further to World's Finest, or they went to Age of Ultron. I don't know. You could speculate yourself. 
I'm in the wheelhouse that I think it's either Mighty Age or Superior Foes. I, I think they were fine with how things worked out. Hawkeye yeah. is not a problem anymore. So Mini Shredder yeah. doesn't have the ID cards. And that's another thing. That's another thing. If they went Superior Foes, you would have ID cards. Mighty Age has ID cards. So do they just allow ID cards back? Ooh. I tell you, there's that, that's a very decisive decision. <laughs> divide, de, 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 no, not decisive. Uh, sorry, divisive decision. Yeah, I agree. They they lost they lost people with ID cards. They gained people with ID cards. I'll say this: I would love some ID cards back. I I would not. So if they just said a blanket, we're banning ID cards. I'm okay with that. Keep some of the. The, you could keep the Punisher van. No one cares. Um, that actually oh, might make Punisher right? War, make Punisher War Machine better. Maybe. What were you saying? Uh, you can't use Punisher van with Punisher War Machine. I no, 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 no. I mean, I mean the Punisher that came with it. Like the problem with Punisher War Machine is that you have oh. two Punishers. But if you go back now, you have the ADW Punishers, which were pretty good. Oh, like one of them was true. the rocket launcher one or whatever. Could actually. Yeah, that's actually, I'm actually playing that in a on a, in an online event that's starting this weekend. Really, I, I, I actually I'm didn't playing. know that. So. <laughs> no, I'm playing Punisher War Machine with that Punisher, the rocket launcher Punisher on the sideline. Yeah, that's a good Punisher. Where is he? That's the knife Punisher. Where's the other Punisher? Rocket. There he is. ADW ADW zero zero nine. Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking of buy sell or any of that stuff that I talked about before, you know, start maybe looking at some golden age, but we won't, or you know, before modern, but who knows? Uh, the that's I guess the main problem I have with legacy cards is that you know if you don't own the figure, they're gonna sell out immediately, and it's really hard to find one. So that's, right. that's yeah, why I'm so hoping they do a legacy set. So they're like, all right, all you people that really want to get in on these figures. We're going to make them available. So I tell you what, here's, I tell you, here's my, uh, here's my tip that I think we can end with, Alex. You got anything else? Uh, let's see, news. Did we learn anything else? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. We'll have a ton, a ton of news next week, I guess, with the Scott Porter videos. Oh, David Herberger does mention Scott's new Netflix show, Ginny and Georgia, is really good. Oh wow, well, yeah. I need to. I need to check it out also. Um, so, you know, the the legacy card stuff has really um, shot up the prices of things. Mm -hmm. Like Morgan Le Fay is like over forty dollars now. Yep. And there's no way to there's no way to predict that. You just gotta have fast fingers. Um, that's right. But so, how do you have faster fingers? Is Right is 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 it's making sure that you're involved with hero clicks on Facebook, right? Uh, making sure that you're involved with WizKids announcements, WizKids YouTube's for the Scotty P videos. Oh, this comes out at ten o'clock generally. Right. Eastern. Uh, 10 Eastern. Eastern. Right. Nine o'clock Central. That's my time. Yep. Right. So if if you want to be on top of these things, let's say you're in California. You've got to make sure that you're on seven o'clock YouTube, seven to seven a.m. YouTube. If you're overseas, you might have to be on eight, nine, ten o'clock YouTube, right? Because those things came out with those legacy cards. I had them bought by ten, by nine, ten. Yeah. Right. And we and we don't mean scalping wise. We mean literally just trying to get your own. Like we don't right, mean, we we're not saying because scalping's huge nowadays. So. Not, not encouraging that for sure. Uh, just buying it for yourself because that's that's all I did. Oh uh, goodness! But but real but, quick, Jay Major said, uh, "Superior Foes Age would be good for my team could be dusted off again." That's right. Yeah. Which I, I assume he meant Superior Foes, and he said SF, so I assume he didn't mean like Street Fighter Age. Ah, oh, he did. He said Indie Age. I, for a second, I was thinking, uh, you know, Superior Foes or Street Fighter. So I guess Jay had a Street Fighter team. I always mm -hmm. wanted to play with Street Fighter. 
And maybe I don't know. I don't know. I know that Jay like had his double shredders in overdrive. Yeah. Um, ah, overdrive, but, uh, man. Oof. Yeah. So anyway, so um, that that's all right. Just learn how to be interconnected, right? Um, you know, know who your good eBay sellers are, right? Know how to navigate Troll and Toad and Quick Stop for five percent off, and like cool stuff and cool stuff all has the stuff. Other- Lucky Dice has stuff on eBay. They generally have a lot of these figures. You've got other. That's right. That I now I will admit it. It's a little frustrating sometimes because we do have like compared to Magic. Magic, there's so many stores everywhere covering it, and we're kind of limited to cool stuff, Troll and Toad, and eBay. And eBay. That's right. Like that's but, it. But so. that's what I'm saying. Know know how to navigate Troll and Toad's website. Know how to navigate Cool Stuff's website. Right, be able to get in, get out, get your figs, um, if they're that important to you, right? Like, I knew immediately Morgan Le Fay had to get it. Uh, she Hulk already had, right? Yeah. So I, for me personally, like it's uh, Slosh and older that I jump for. Slosh and newer, I have. Yeah, uh, and we could and... we we speculate with Wonder Woman set be Wonder Woman 80th. They're doing legacy cards. It's probably a Wonder Woman. So, look at some Wonder Woman. See if you still have all of your Wonder Women. I don't know which ones they're going for, but you know what? Uh, it's probably a Wonder Woman, if it's a Wonder Woman set. Right. I don't think they're going to bring back you know, Steve Trevor or whatever. You know, be like, alright, Legacy right. Steve. So, what I am very excited about there is, uh, Sam being a Wonder Woman fan... Um, I went back to the beginning of time a couple of Christmases ago and uh, purchased every, uh, I guess, legacy Wonder Woman that existed. So. Did you ever get the, the special movie one? Not movie, the Gravity I, Feed? I did. I uh, Troll and Toad has those um, Gravity Feeds. They somehow got them. Yeah, I saw that so, the other day. They're cheap now. Yeah, They're like 30 bucks for the Wonder Woman or 40 bucks for the Wonder Woman. Ooh, yeah, so I bought the we bought the gravity feed and got the figure. So, um, to tell everybody good night. Yeah, it wrote, last thing Edison said just use the promo code during my recent purchase of Troll and Toad. Awesome, Edison. Don't forget about the 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 uh, click stop promo code. It definitely saves you saves you on tax. You know, kind of counters that a little bit. It's very helpful. But I think that's it, man. We've talked for an hour and a half. We'll probably see you guys. Um, next week because that's when yep. scotty p will come out we might leave some stuff for the podcast but if there's some you know once we hear about alternative formats we'll probably be going live that day to start talking craziness about it um but yeah exactly. hey thanks everybody for watching y'all have a great rest of y'all's night see you guys